It's no secret that whilst Sea of Thieves can add as many adventures, mysteries, and alternative story content as they want, Tall Tales will always be the most prominent form of narrative progression in the game, with some of the best moments in Sea of Thieves being contained in them. They're giant arcs that change the lore of the game in dramatic ways, reshaping our understanding of the Sea of Thieves forever. And by the looks of things, the Flameheart storyline is currently en route to reaching its climax. Regardless of whether you think Flameheart will be defeated or not, Rare have to have some Tall Tales in development to shift the Flameheart storyline whenever the next change in focus in the game is. Whilst that may not be for a little while yet, they're definitely approaching faster than we think. Tall Tales are essential to the game, and the game's only form of a solid campaign. Today we're going to be looking at a new set of Tall Tales to finish off the Ashen Age arc. There are five of these making a total of seven Ashen Age Tall Tales. Keep in mind whilst these may seem a bit far-fetched, literally anything is possible after a pirate's life. I mean, seriously, please don't tell me in any universe you thought they were ever going to add the level of experience that they ended up doing in that update. The first thing we've got to look at is what makes a good Tall Tale set. Why was A Pirate's Life so incredibly phenomenal? Apart from it involving Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, of course, what was the reason that it stole the show at the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase? What was the reason why it was so enjoyable and shared and loved around the whole entire gaming community? Well, there's a few different things we've got to look at here. The first being the brand new locations. Apart from adding the Sunken Kingdom and the Sea of the Damned, we also got the Coral Castle and the Siren Spire. All of these were handcrafted and very closely designed. Altogether, everywhere was new. There was nothing that was samey. Compared to Shores of Gold, where all the islands we'd seen before, apart from obviously the final Shores of Gold Tale, there were slight environment changes like in the Art of the Trickster, but having stuff that's completely brand new obviously adds an absolute ton. The second thing is, as I've just said, the level of detail that was put into the entire campaign as a whole. If you look at Shores of Gold, it's great. It's a good multiplayer campaign, linear storyline apart from the last one, that's a goddamn experience. But with this, it felt like you were in the movie. It felt like you could literally purchase this campaign for easily $30. You could easily pay that money for what we experienced in this campaign. You know what I mean if you've played A Pirate's Life and Shores of Gold, but just the level of action that's constantly going on. Things are always happening around you. The other thing about A Pirate's Life is that they introduce so many new features, some big and some small. Big ones include things like new enemies, but the other stuff is just technology that we've never seen implemented in CFTs before. Even stuff that's so simple as clock towers falling down, or humongous walls sliding back, or the Kraken reveal in the Sunken Pearl. They're kinda small things, but they add so much to the experience. It's feeling like you're being in a movie, that's what makes it so special. The final thing that made A Pirate's Life absolutely phenomenal was the way that everything sort of strung together. The storyline really connected, there were things that cross-tailed. The voice acting was absolutely on point, well, maybe the impressions a couple here and there were a little bit off, but overall everything just fitted together like a jigsaw piece. Nothing felt out of place, it all felt like it was one linear story. So then, all tales are going to be started on a war post, on an outpost. And the first one is going to be called The Ashen Winds Forever. This is your classic intro opening tale, but it will function differently to other ones before. There's not a problem that the player creates. Flameheart is already a very real threat on the Sea of Thieves, and he's attacking it like never before. The Sea of Thieves is at war. The first tale and all these tales are going to involve Ramsay a lot. The Pirate Lord is going to be introducing most of these and be a prominent character throughout. In this first tale, it's going to be kind of similar to Heart of Fire. You're going to be tasked with assaulting on Flameheart's Fortress. This, in a way, may seem something we've done before, but all intro tales have to seem like that. It have to seem like, oh, we're going to solve this problem like nothing, but then a bigger one will be created. This fortress is going to hybrid the world event with Heart of Fire, and it's going to be how I've said before, but the Legend of the Veil vale should have been. His fortress will be guarded by ghost ships and it'll be a Spanish soldier one. Skeletons and phantoms will be working together for once throughout, and there'll be puzzles and dungeons inside, 
which players will have to overcome as they make their way throughout the lair. At the end of it, you'll find out that Flameheart is planning to destroy the Sea of Thieves and rebuild it in his own way, with the help from the Ancient that he has captive that we learn from the Force of the Forgotten Adventure. This update aims to deliver new environments as well as exploring old, and so for Tale 2 will be taking us to the Sea of the Five Winds, therefore the tale will be named the Five Winds. In a hurry, Ramsey will come to us and take us to the Sea of the Five Winds, using his staff as a Shroudbreaker to try and find a means of stopping Flameheart. We find Pendragon at the newly created outpost, where Ramsey goes and tries to find more about Flameheart's plans. Pendragon then leads us across islands to try and find a mysterious stranger that he's talking of. Eventually to a humongous tropical island, which we'll have to brave the perils of. He then goes back to Ramsey and we're tasked with navigating this new landscape. Eventually we'll find an ancient stronghold where after making our way inside, we meet Isdro, who tells us the story of the fateful encounter with the captain. For Isdro, if you do not know, is a member of Flameheart Jr.'s crew. Well, was, we don't really know anymore. He says that only the captain will know how to stop him using his power. This is when Pendragon will reappear with Ramsay and in a reveal, Belle will appear and claim she knew of Isdro for absolutely ages and it was her who originally rescued him from the Sea of the Damned and took him to the Sea of the Five Winds where he can go into hiding. The Sea of the Damned is where the captain is currently trapped, however it could be risky to rescue him as we don't know whether he'll side with us or not but at this point we don't really have an option. Tale 3 is called Cursed Legends. Using the Veil of the Ancients, we journey through the Sea of the Damned, accompanied by Bell, who used Isdro's memories to weave a path through the Unknown Sea, similar to the pirates' live tall tales. We solve puzzles, battle unimaginable odds, and learn more about Isdro's past. But then we reach where the captain should be, in the deepest parts of the Sea of the Damned. The Dark Brethren appear and try to kill us, where the captain tells them to cease fire. We speak to him about Flameheart and explain all his plans, whereupon he laughs in our face. But then Duke has a change in heart. Seeing the good that can be done, he comes and joins us, and we escape by the skin of our teeth. Tale 4 is called The Ancient Capital. During Duke's time in the Dark Brethren, he's learnt many secrets from the captain, including the location of one of the ancient capital cities in the Sea of the Five Winds, which upon exploring with Pendragon and Bell, solving many puzzles which both characters' ability sets will come in useful, things like memories to solve puzzles, the Sword of Souls, etc., will reveal the ancient king's tomb, which Pendragon will release his soul from, meaning that they still have a presence within the Sea of Thieves. Here we get attacked by Flameheart's phantoms and skeletons, including an Ashen Lord boss fight, which afterwards the city is, sadly, subsequently destroyed. We aren't meant to win, and we escape down a river stream that takes us to the ocean and are covered by a mysterious force. The tale ends back on our boat, where both Belle and Pendragon agree they must confront Ramsay about something. Tale 5 A Reign of Ash Forever we venture to the Shores of Gold, and there we meet Isdro, Duke, Bell, Pendragon, Ramsey, and the Mysterious Stranger. Ramsey says it's time, and acts all mysterious and then performs a massive ritual, bigger than we've ever seen before, and the Ancients appear in their masses, with the Ancient Leader and the Priest at the forefront, who Ramsey greets knowingly. It is then revealed that Ramsey had had communication with the Ancients for a while, and he's been planning for the worst. And seen as that's now come, they're back in real form, and they can fight, with the Ancient Priest and the Ancient Leader planning to stop Flameheart's ritual for good. A massive fight ensues with the Servant of the Flame covering for his dad, and after waves of armadas of ghost ships around a new fortress, with help from ancient ships, Ramsey ship, Pendragon and Bell, we're told to go and stop the ritual that Flameheart himself is performing. Alongside the priest we confront him, where we're met by an energy shield and phantoms. After killing the phantoms, a soul flame captain appears, which we obviously kill. The priest interrupts Flameheart, but almost gets struck by a killing blow. But then, the other mysterious stranger appears, the one that has been missing for three 
years. They both enter a duel with magical weapons against Flameheart, quite Harry Potter style here. Flameheart has made himself powerful from the ritual, however, and it's clear they cannot go on. We're told to go back to our ship whilst they struggle and prepare for the worst. But just in time, the captain moves the priest out of the way and starts dueling Flameheart. The Dark Brethren appear in the surrounding waters and start fighting the servant of the Flame ship. The captain states, A common enemy, eh? It was always my destiny to die at sea, before launching himself at Flameheart with a trident. We see Amaranta wielding in the Forsaken Hunter adventure. The priest vanishes and there's a massive explosion. When the smoke clears, the island Flameheart was on is reduced to nothing, and all his ghost ships have gone. We all gather on the island where the priest explains what he thinks has happened. The mysterious stranger explains where she has been, and both strangers disappear. Pendragon and Bell investigate what stir it caused in the Sea of the Demmed, appearing concerned and also disappear. Ramsey and the Ancients celebrate our efforts, but the Ancients claim they have a call to answer, and something much worse is coming. But they will return when the time is right, and Ramsey and Isdro decide to go with them, as they sail on their ships and disappear in the sunset. We then also notice the Dark Brethren are not there. And there we go, that just about wraps up the idea. Let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below, and feel free to suggest your ideas for tall tales. Obviously, you don't have to go nearly in depth as I did, but I want to hear your ideas. What would you like to see come to in tall tales? But anyway, that does just about bring us to the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know it was a slightly longer one, but if you did enjoy, please do consider leaving a like and subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest Sea of Thieves news as and when it comes out as Captaincy is now approaching for real this time, not with the delay. And why not hit the bell as well while you're at it? But anyways, apart from all that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.